Hey guys, I'm Sebastian. This is Don. Hello. We are the locally world famous chiropractors in Costa Mesa, California. We're going to cover shoulder and shoulder blade or mid back pain today. Shoulder issues are usually felt here and or here. Shoulder blade issues could be felt here, here, or somewhere deep underneath the blade. You may also feel some associated areas like here or here. What do you notice that people feel like with the shoulder blade? Like how do they know that they should keep watching this video? So shoulder blade itself, it's like, it, it's like between the spine and the actual shoulder blade. It's like somewhere in between here. Like you just want to take a lacrosse ball and just press into it or have somebody dig it out or scoop it out with a spoon. It's like this one knotted area. You could probably even find a knot there. Now we're going to cover the three diagnostic categories of most shoulder and shoulder blade pain. This encompasses about probably 95% of shoulder and shoulder blade pain. These are general categories. The first one is internal joint. The next one is around the joint or surrounding the joint. And then there's referred to the joint. We're going to cover all of these today in this video. Stay tuned for the whole video to get the most information you can find on the internet about this topic. The internal joint topic will be covered from internal shoulder, the glenohumeral joint, as well as internal as in the shoulder blade area. Since some of you will experience shoulder pain and others will experience shoulder blade pain and some of you will experience both. We want to make sure to be comprehensive so you all get the information you need. If you're looking at true, true shoulder stuff, it's going to be here, Don, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be right there, probably. So we're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about the shoulder blades. It's so sharp when you press into it. People describe that area between the shoulder blade all the time. So that's what we're talking about, at least with blade. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's harder to look down. Some people actually have more pain looking up. Mm -hmm. I know one gentleman I had, he had pain with uh, holding his cell phone and, and working with it in his hand, but when he switched hands, it was better. Mm -hmm. With the shoulder stuff, I know you had stuff earlier, so yeah. reaching up was So probably like true cool. shoulder, when he was talking about like right there, right there, true shoulder stuff will be like, you can point to it with one finger. It's not like this whole big area of shoulder happening. So uh, for me specifically, like, oof, right there. It's like a little pinchy, like one spot I can point to that I feel it right here at the top. Did you say oof? Oof. Okay. <laughs> Pretty bad. And then like even outward like this. So like right about here, maybe even a little higher, there's another oof there. You just point to it with one finger. I can feel it pinch underneath there. It feels very pinchy. Yep. Sometimes the bathroom movements. Mm, going behind right. here. Yeah. You know. Things like that. That's what we'll notice with the shoulder joint itself. We're going to start with internal structures. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Don wanted to start with actual the oof spots, the actual shoulder. Sure. I'll cover a little bit more of the mid-back shoulder blade oofs. Yeah, absolutely. I think what's really uh, important to cover too is just like, it's not always just one spot. We're going to go over all of these things like we said, but upper trap tightness, sometimes neck pain, sometimes pec, delt, back of the shoulder here. All of these kinds of things can play a role in some of it too, what you may be feeling, but you don't always have to have all of that. Um, so my little model and why I'm coming down here is I want to kind of show you a little bit more about the shoulder joint. This is my right shoulder here. So if I were to kind of put this like this, all right, and bring this this way. So that's my arm. There's my blade back there. Okay. And this is just my collarbone that comes across. The collarbone's important in this one only because where it attaches at the scapula here creates your AC joint. Underneath the AC joint is that impingement type shoulder diagnosis that we're talking about. So with impingement, okay, so if I'm going with my shoulder that I just showed you, that little pinchy spot that we're talking about, there's three things that can create that pinching. Number one is the supraspinatus muscle. So at the top of the shoulder, right in through here, that muscle comes at the back of the shoulder blade and runs underneath. Let me kind of make sure it's focused there. Runs underneath in that AC joint and the tendon itself can get pinched on when you're at that top position there. There's a a bursa under there as well that helps with sliding and gliding of tendons in the joint and that one can get impinged on as well and then there's one other tendon your biceps tendon that runs right up through here and it attaches also underneath that joint if we kind of moved all of this out of the way that tendon runs up underneath the AC joint as well so those three things are the three different stuff that can cause impingement type symptoms again overhead or anything like this and you can point to one area right in there that you feel that with yep a lot of times it's with specific activities like throwing, overhead throwing bothers it, sideways or underarm doesn't, um, reaching behind the back seat of a car, mm -hmm. um, but it's not like it burns with everything. Sometimes people actually feel when they sleep on the side, it, it makes it irritated. When they roll off of it, it goes away. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Chris, we forgot to cover labrum actually. So really quickly, I just want to talk about the labrum. It is just a little cup right inside the joint where the, again, the arm itself and the shoulder blade meet. There's a cup right there that kind of allows the actual, um, the actual arm to stay in place there, okay? And so there can be tears there. Like popping and clicking will come along with it. Sometimes locking in that joint will happen as well. Sometimes that happens if you dislocated your shoulder as well. I'm gonna cover internal of the mid-back region, and there won't be a lot of these I'm gonna cover because uh, quite honestly, if you had some internal structure here, uh, go ahead and turn for me, Don. Uh, there you go. So we're gonna use her back, and what color is this, orange? Yes. Okay, good. I'm colorblind, everyone. Right about there, the orange area is her thoracic region. Uh, these are the bones in the area called the vertebral bodies. There's also little nerve roots, and there's also little disc right there, which are uh, kind of buffering structures. If there's something actually internal in the area here, like an infection in the spine or a dislocated rib, I mean, you, you should be going to the ER, quite honestly. I know there's this big, long uh, uh, history of people thinking ribs are out. They're not physically out. You can't physically see it out. It's It might feel, feel tender right there, like the rib head feels like it has some pressure on it, like it needs to be popped. Certainly it's not a dislocation. If it was, uh, probably the uh, ER doctor who saw you would think, oh gosh, did you get in a car accident? It requires some trauma. Like the area around the rib head has a lot of ligaments around it. It's very strong um, and it would take some force to try to knock that place not going to place it. It's not like it's, you're sitting and your rib goes out. Yeah. If you had like impact trauma at all, this is probably not the video for you to be watching. What's one thing that might work out with deloading or making people feel better with this? I think a frog might work. Yeah, absolutely. Frog breathing. Yeah. So Don's in the frog breathing position. Uh, obviously this would help out with stuff down into here. Um, but we're going to use this uh, a couple different ways to help out with shoulder blade pain as well as the stuff in the front, these areas. I don't think with a labrum it'll really work too much, but it will create what we call a position of comfort. Go ahead and bring your elbows actually a little bit more to the side for me. There you go. And a little bit more. This table's kind of narrow. Uh, and let's just rest the head really heavy on the table. We like to call this the heavy head position. And so she's actually letting her shoulder blades relax and sag. I know you can't really see too much because you're not overhead, but my finger will disappear between her shoulder blades because she's so sagged in this position. What this will do is it helps deload the area underneath the AC joint for most people. Uh, you might have to tinker where the hands and elbows are. Um, for the labrum, it's just not going to be using it generally. Um, but an area that might feel like a rib is actually out of place, um, or uh, let's just say it's strained in the actual rib head area, this should actually deload it as well. The general idea when we're using modification of pain strategies like this is we're trying to modify or reduce pain to make it so your body can heal itself. Now let's spend about a minute in this position and then uh, see how things go. Yep. If you feel like at this point we have described your symptoms, I highly suggest you click on the link that may pop up somewhere in this video. If not, it is definitely down below in the comments section. That's gonna help guide you in the right direction for the next steps to recovery. You can also feel free to reach out to us via phone call. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on and we'd be happy to help guide you in the right direction as well, specific to your needs. We do work with people virtually or in person, so if you're near us, come on in. If you're not near us, we can still help you. If you feel like we haven't described your symptoms up to this point, please feel free to continue watching the video. We have a lot more to cover. And so now we're gonna to go to external uh, shoulder and shoulder blade mid-back structures. Uh, external is generally things outside of the joint, which is gonna be muscles, tendons. A lot of you will probably resonate well with the tight muscles in the area. Mm -hmm. And most of you have probably felt like, well, I've overused my supraspinatus. I've overused my infraspinatus. I've overused my uh, upper trap. <laughs> You got an itch? <laughs> I've been sitting too long, but my rhomboids are working too hard. A lot of this will fall into that overuse or external structure category. Why don't you show where all those muscles are on me? So when we're talking about muscle attachments into this area that could be creating pain, uh, upper trap starts kind of at the base of the skull here, comes around and across and attaches at the joint here, as well as the mid trap, it comes down and it comes across and attaches right into the shoulder blade on the inside there. So you have it kind of fan through here and then it will also go down and attach right into kind of like that mid back area right there. So you have an upper, a middle and a lower trap that all plays a role. You have your rhomboids that fan across like this as well. So they attach right at the spine and then right into the blade of the, or the inner part of the shoulder blade. Okay, you have a levator muscle. So 
So that one is also one that attaches just at certain points in the neck here, and it kind of goes down and attaches right at the medial border of the scapula. Usually that one is the one that you can like dig into and feel like that really knotted spot into it. We also have the shoulder blade muscles itself. So super, super spinatus that we talked about in the beginning. You have your teres muscles. Um, so these ones are the ones that are responsible for internal and external rotation of your shoulder blade. So yeah, there we, you go. So we kind of discussed perfect. these on these in this one already. Yeah. The thought with these is they're overused and they do feel like muscles. It feels like the muscles really, really tight, right? Mm -hmm. The easiest thing to do is to, we call it load sharing. So this shoulder blade is only held on by one bony attachment and it's in the front. It's in the clavicle area. So all these slings of muscles are around and the rhomboid's just one of them. And if that rhomboid's being forced to do a bunch of work because the other ones aren't working, then it's going to start to speak up. Most people would call that an overuse injury. I personally call it an underutilization because all this other stuff starts to work. And it's when you have this winging happen right here. And so we have this poking that happens. I can almost grab her right here. I can grab her right here. Mm -hmm. This presentation will happen in any position that she's in. This could be from a few things. One of them could be um, just generally the muscles of the shoulder blade aren't working well together like we just mentioned. Facilitation or having the muscles work a little bit more can help out. The second thing is you can actually have, uh, and we'll talk about this in the next section, is actually the long thoracic nerve or contribution to the long thoracic nerve. So long thoracic nerve coming down there actually tells the serratus anterior muscle what to do. The serratus anterior muscle's job is to push the shoulder blade and lock it onto the rib cage. If you had issues with the it nerve itself that's been impinged or the contributing nerves that create it, then your scapula will wing. So okay. what do they do about all this stuff? That's a good question. I really like the low bear. Okay. Let's so low bear does a lot of different things to be honest, but Seth's gonna start in the position here. What we're really working on is, I like to describe it mainly as the um, ability to kind of play with, um, movement through the spine, that mid-back that we were talking about, and movement through the shoulder and trying to differentiate those two things. We add load into the shoulder itself, get those muscles to work a little bit better and share the load like we were talking about. So less stress on some of those ones that are creating pain, getting the other ones to help out and trying to get some better movement through the spine itself here is really important. Would you add anything else to that, Seb? Mid-back extension mm -hmm. or uprighting is usually pretty helpful for people with all these uh, tight muscles around the shoulder and pec and so on. Absolutely. Shoulder doesn't just work by itself. It all works together. So what we're going to do in this one is, Seb, I'm going to have you try to just get away from my finger right here. Perfect. So see how he's kind of upright here. He's trying to trying to create like a little bowl of cereal I can eat out of his back right here. So just kind of getting away from my finger, chest to the floor. He's going to keep a little squeeze there. And now without losing that, I want you to use your elbows to push the table away from you. Good. And he's going to kind of come on up through that and he's going to load and hold. What we don't want to see, come on back down, lose that for me when you're going up. Oh. There you go. So he starts to round and kind of pushes all the milk out of that cereal bowl. So what's important is keep the milk there, keep the squeeze, use the shoulder blades to push yourself through this, and we hold. We hold for time here. We breathe through it. We, what we should be feeling is a lot of this stuff working, this under part of the shoulder blade. The under part here, kind of in the mid back here is working. You don't want upper traps overworking on you. You don't want any pinchiness in the shoulders with this one. Yeah. Uh, also, too, like um, a lot of people have attributed the overuse musculature, uh, upper trap, shoulder blade, things like that, um, with poor posture mm -hmm. or the cross syndromes. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you notice that the bowl of cereal cue that she used actually helps kind of upright posture a little bit. We're not telling you to be neurotic about posture, but generally speaking, that whole thing like the like this kind of stuff mm -hmm. tends to make a lot of those things tight. And so maybe an exercise that would help the other musculature work might actually help you out quite a bit. Absolutely. Making your posture better is not a good remedy. Mm -hmm. Okay, doing an exercise like a way to support the support the body or support the shoulder shoulder blade or the spine is actually a little bit more helpful. And even doing exercises like single arm dumbbell rows, mm -hmm. overhead presses, squatting, deadlifting can also very much help with posture. And it'll make it so you don't have to think about your posture. It just generally um, you're just stronger. Uh, let's cover uh, referred pain. Referred pain is our favorite. So referred pain specifically. What we're going to get into now is more talking about like the neck area. 
So um, Seb used this model on me and we were talking about the orange area being more of the mid back, the part that kind of runs through the shoulder blades. Now we're gonna pay attention to the yellow part here, which is actually the neck, okay? And when we're talking about referred pain, it's really important for you to understand that you don't have to have neck pain for you to actually, this actually be what's going on with you, okay? Um, but just to come a little bit closer here, uh, the yellow part is the neck. You have all these little different bony yellow spots that are your vertebra, and then right in between there's some discs there, okay? And the nerves, there we go, the nerves come right out of in between each of those spots um, in that area. Those nerves are kind of what we're focusing on when we're talking about referral pain. So. Although this being the point of where it's coming from, referral pain means we feel it somewhere else besides where the central source of where it's coming from is, okay? So that can be impinged on by different discs creating a tourniquet on the nerve, bony changes in that area creating a tourniquet on the nerve, or maybe just the way that you're moving creating some sort of stress on that nerve itself. Um, but a few different reasons why that can happen. Referral pain, this is the source. You don't feel it here, you feel it back there, or you feel it in here. So to kind of illuminate that a little bit. So here's uh, Sebastian's neck nerve coming out of there. Okay, let's get you a little bit closer actually. There we go. So central source of where it's coming from. He doesn't have neck pain or he might, okay? And it comes out of those holes that we're talking about, something creating a tourniquet right through here. And it all comes and supplies into this area. So when we're talking about shoulder blade here, turn sideways for me. There we go. That nerve, there's a branch that comes off of it and can refer pain right into that spot there. Although it feels knotty and it feels like a muscle when you press into it, that muscle might be pissed off because of the nerve that's supplied by it. So once you release the tourniquet from this nerve here, now that muscle can relax and do its job. Sometimes it's the d different nerve that will go into the upper trap here, so we feel that upper trap tightness as well. May still be some nerve pain. Um, same thing in kind of the outer shoulder blade or sometimes in the front of the pec or the pec itself or front of the shoulder blade. See all of these different contributions from the neck there. So that can still be the culprit. So if we've only been focusing on the shoulder for so long and you're not feeling any better, maybe we look at the central source and see if something different changes. Did you mention the diagnosis that usually can re create referred pain or no? I don't know. I just mentioned it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I forgot. Um, like a cervical disc herniation. Um, or even a larger, uh, larger than herniation is usually going to be uh, a little bit more painful in the neck, but non-painful disc herniations with referral is super common. Sometimes people feel numbness into the hands or fingers or all the fingers, front and back, or just a, a couple of them. Sometimes they'll feel sh uh, elbow pain that seems like tennis or pickleball elbow, uh, and sometimes into here like your golfer's elbow. Uh, I've met people who feel like their bicep is always super tight, and their tricep is tight as well. They don't need surgery typically, uh, or medications or injections. Mm -hmm. Usually they're very easy to manage, but they're a scary thing. Yeah. Um, or a pinched nerve in the neck is another one. But also two things like organs, I guess pancos tumors, like a bunch of weird things also can refer as well. We love working with cervical disc herniations and pinched nerves. They're very, very simple to work with, mm -hmm. um, but they scare the hell out of people. Yeah, if this is you, a lot of times what happens is maybe that shoulder blade or shoulder actually is changed by your head position. Looking down, looking up, sideways, rotating. Ah, there's my shoulder blade, what the heck? Well, maybe we should go down this route a little bit if that's you. You know, the funny thing is too, that like, so people are convinced a lot of times it's the rhomboid. Mm -hmm. The rhomboid doesn't attach to the neck. Mm -hmm. So neck movement changes how they feel. Yeah, a... This whole area, the neck, mid back, shoulder blade and shoulder joint proper, they're in a relationship. Like you can't really separate it. The body's one big unit. Yeah, when it comes to rehabbing your shoulder or shoulder blade area, I mean, you should always start at the neck first. Rule that out before moving into the areas where we're feeling the pain. So how do we do that? Well, you don't need an MRI to do it. That's true. And you don't need an x-ray to do it. <laughs> Usually something like a simple examination, like, oh, you're going to do that? Well, why don't we do this instead? Yeah. Go and look down for me. Look up for me. I'm going to push on your head. Good. Look straight. Look right. Look up. So this is um, so what we're load testing Don's neck for, but generally speaking, we can figure out if this is a disc or a nerve without having to send anyone for an expensive image. Absolutely. What do we do if we think this is referral pain or maybe the other two things that we tried wasn't working for our shoulder or shoulder blade? I want Seb here to try to... You we always talk about... You want, you want to do it? We'll do it at I the know. same time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll show him the wrong way and Seb's doing it the right way. A lot of times we'll say make a double chin and people go like this. And this is not what we want. And we also don't want anything weird like this. What Seb is doing is what we need here. We always say, like, maybe somebody ugly is trying to come in and kiss you. 
when you're trying to get away from them. Exactly. But you're not rude. Oh, I got poop on my hands. Get away from it. <laughs> so I, I usually say you have, a, you have your chin on a thin pane of glass. There you go. Don't break it. Don't take your head off it. Slide it off it. Nice. Dawn's a little bit more grotesque. <laughs> I got those from you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, uh, usually doing about 20, 30 reps, we'll be like, ah, huh. There's something different. A lot of people will also ask too, uh, you'll put me into this referral pain category, but I don't have any neck pain. Like why is it, we really want to get into talking about why it's important that you don't have to have neck pain. Okay. I'm so glad you asked this. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> You can look up some of this research if you want, but there's a sign called Cloward Sign. Uh, Cloward Sign, uh, back in the day, so there was like, a lot of the uh, MDs, I think it was back in the 60s or so, they knew that shoulder blade pain was coming from the neck somehow, some way, but they really couldn't identify what structure it was. Was it the facets? Was it the nerve? Was it the ligaments? Was it the disc? And so on. And so anyways, they conducted a little study and they found out that Cloward Sign uh, showed it was the disc. So Cloward sign was born. And so you guys can look it up if you want to, but it takes into consideration the possibility that you don't have to have neck pain to have shoulder blade pain that is referred from the neck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you look it up, it'll show you like the different areas that it kind of refers into with or without neck pain. I, a really common area is C5. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of that too. But, but generally the shoulder blade pain or the arm pain or the numbness could be more intense than the actual, the spinal that aspect of it. It might just feel tightness. If any of things really, these things really help, like seem to help or give you any sort of relief, we know that the options that we have for you uh, are going to be helpful. But these are only just starting positions. So this is just ways to um, try to decrease discomfort, try to shift load, try to take the tourniquet off the nerve. But that's just a beginning part of it. Um, there are multiple steps to making sure that this is gone for long periods of time. You know, one thing at least that helps out with, uh, helps a lot of people understand uh, what they need to do and what process to do it is, so we made an acronym, we call it MAP A Load Framework. So M means modification of pain. We covered three different ways to modify pain with internal, external, and referred problems today. Second is activation of the support system, which generally will take, uh, let's just say with option two, getting the other muscles to work a little bit more so you can actually build some glue in a good way and build some productive stiffness so you don't have to feel like you're always kind of doing all this weird stuff mm -hmm. anymore, right? A lot of you are going to play baseball again or play uh, um, like pickleball. Like these are like you need to build some resiliency. Patterning is the P and patterning movement. Sometimes people, when they've had a shoulder pain for a long time, instead of actually raising their arm, even though it feels good, they go like they do this other stuff. And so it's a, it's a pattern of movement. Sometimes you gotta break it. Lastly is you apply load to the situation, which might be an overhead press movement, a single arm dumbbell row, a farmer's carry. Something that's challenging that actually saves your progress. Uh, I know in school, there's a couple times where I was writing something and my computer shut off. And I was pretty pissed because when I turned it back on, it was all gone. And so that's basically the hap what happens to a lot of people that don't progress through load and make their body adapt. If you save your progress, you'll get on to the stuff that you really want to do. So how do we do that? I mean, there's a time and a place for all of this stuff. Where are you at in that journey? We can help you in three different ways. Uh, in person, which category do you fall in? Which diagnosis are you? If you want help figuring that out, come see us in person. We'd be happy to put you on the right path. So virtually is also an option. People have had really good responses with that. And then we have some online programs as well too. So some uh, web-based things that you can take yourself through. It takes you step-by-step step through the journey of how to get rid of things like this. Yeah, and it's always nice to have a, a movement assessment. Um, and obviously we do you know, load testing and stuff. Um, you can do that, but also how you move and watching you move is important. And so if we watch someone reach over overhead, we can reasonably get an idea of what's going on. Uh, reaching arm behind the back, even things like squatting, single leg stance, uh, and how you carry objects are very helpful information to help us coach you on how to do an exercise like a low bear. Because yeah. you might coach that differently for me and somebody else, right? Absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us. We do have a form on the bottom if you want to contact us and get uh, ask us any questions that you'd like. We've asked you a few questions on that first to figure out how we can help you and how you want to be helped. And we're not going to suggest something that you don't want to do or vice versa. Please fill the form out uh, and we'll talk to you on the other side. A couple questions that we get are common questions. Um, I'm gonna ask Don one. I'm consistently stretching my shoulder blade and it just never goes away, but I was told that that was supposed to help. Mm -hmm. What's up? So a lot of times people will think that stretching is really good because it feels tight and when something feels tight, we should stretch it. 
or when you do that position, you're like, that's my pain. I feel it exactly. I'm hitting it. This is good. Um, that's not always good, especially when we talk about the referral pain category that we went over in the video. Nerves do not like stretching. So if you're in the category of stretching and maybe it makes you worse or it's not changing anything or it's very temporary relief, you're, you have a tourniquet on that nerve like we talked about and then we're just pulling and tugging on it when we're doing stretching and it's not alleviating any of the tightness. So um, if you fall into that category, I definitely would stay away from stretching. Sometimes even just not stretching anymore actually does a lot, gives you a lot more relief than anything else. I've mm -hmm. seen that before. Mm -hmm. People always ask all the time if they should go get a massage, if they should get their rib adjusted, um, maybe do some e-stem, ice, heat. What do you think about that stuff? Yeah, so I think, so you mentioned a lot of what we call passive care. There's nothing wrong with passive care. Um, passive care is a really good way to reduce pain or modify pain. In the, in the webinar already, we already covered uh, the map of load framework. So M, modification of pain. Uh, we showed you some of the options we like in here, but there's nothing wrong with, you know, pop in and rub in and inject in and like, you know, if there's the time and place, like there's no reason you should be in pain for a long period of time just because you feel like an exercise is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. So by whatever means, if it reduces pain, that fills that category, but it does not activate the support system. It does not pattern movement. You have the same movement patterns that you did and it doesn't apply any load. Uh, interesting, actually, there was a, a, a research study, at, and I, I don't have a reference for it, but they had people do hip replacements. Mm -hmm. And so afterwards, after the hip was replaced, they watched them walk. They walked the same way. They weren't in pain anymore because they actually needed it, but they walked the same way. Got so a repattern, got a retrain. Yeah.